What is the internet protocol? So we know what the internet is. The internet is this huge computer network connecting billions of computers all over the world. We know what a protocol is. Protocol is a structured way for computers to communicate that are networked together. The internet protocol, as this name might imply, is the common protocol that unites the internet together, and particularly unites the middle of the internet. So every computer that is connected to the internet runs the internet protocol. And so the internet is defined not only by being this network of computer networks, but also by being a network that agrees on at least one thing, and that is we are going to exchange packets using the internet protocol. So let's talk about what the internet protocol does, and it's also equally interesting to talk a little bit about what the internet protocol does not do. So the history here goes back to um, a seminal paper by Witserf and Robert Kahn. So these guys are sometimes considered some of the, the fathers or, of the internet. Um, and their original protocol for packet network uh, uh, intercommunication actually included features that we find both now in the internet protocol itself and in something called the transmission control protocol or TCP uh, that we'll talk about in the future. But what, and so the early internet protocol actually combined a bunch of features that we find in, in the modern protocol stack. But the IP protocol itself, so protocols do two things. They define the structure of messages that are exchanged by computers that are communicating, and they establish expectations about what computers are going to do when they receive various types of messages. So here is the IP, the structure of the IP protocol header. So there is data in this packet that follows this header, and that data can take any form. But the IP protocol specifies that each packet starts with this information. And this is the number of bits, so there's a four bit field that's the version of IP that you're using, and then that's followed by other information. The most important things that we want to point out in the IP header that have to do with how IP works are two things. There's a source IP address, and there is a destination IP address. And these are by far the most important parts of the IP packet because these are directly connected to what the IP protocol is trying to accomplish. IP is trying to move a packet of information from a source on the internet, some computer that's connected to the internet, to some other computer that's connected to the internet. And so the packet contains both the source IP address where the packet came from and the destination IP address, where is this packet trying to go? And those two fields that are part of the header are very connected with what the IP protocol is trying to accomplish. So let's, so let's talk about that for a minute. If I have two hosts that are connected to the internet, call them as usual, A and B, if A sends a packet, if A transmits a packet on the internet, and it wants to reach B, it sets the source destination, its source of the packet to itself, and it sets the destination of the packet to the computer that it's trying to reach. And we'll talk about how these addresses work later. But for now, it sets the source to itself, it sets the destination to B, and then it begins to transmit this across the internet using the IP protocol. And that can involve multiple transmissions between computers that are connected to the internet. So it's very possible that A doesn't have a direct connection to B, and so it needs to use the IP protocol and it needs to use the cooperation of other computers that are part of the internet to make sure that this packet that was originated at A eventually gets to B. Now, there's some interesting things about the IP protocol in terms of what the IP protocol does not do. The IP protocol is what's called best effort. It will try to deliver the packet from A to B, but there are a number of different cases in which this packet may not arrive. So for example, one of the computers that's involved in transmission may run out of space to hold packets and may drop the packet, and so the packet may never arrive at B. And the core IP protocol is best effort, so it's not gonna guarantee that the packet gets there. The other thing that it's not going to guarantee is that packets arrive in the order in which they were sent. So if A sends another packet to B, so it sends packet one and packet two, both across the internet to B, it's possible that B receives packet two before it receives packet one. And so the IP protocol also doesn't guarantee anything about the order in which packets arrive. 
The final important thing that the IP protocol doesn't do is it doesn't really include any additional useful addressing or information about what B should do with the packet that it got from A. So in the best case, A will send a packet to B, B will receive the packet, but once the packet gets to B, there's no information in the IP field about anything else that should happen to the packet at that point. And those are things that are added by other parts of the protocol. But the base IP protocol is best effort, unreliable, unordered packet delivery across all the computers that are connected to the internet from a source to a destination. How about start with what is the internet protocol? Or I don't know. What is the internet <laughs> protocol? <laughs> we could do that. We could have little things. What is the. Oh, I'm still recording. <laughs>